Okay, more milling. I am now into my pine stock. As you can see, this pile right here is most of the pine that I've collected, um, that I've cut down and uh, been hoarding and holding off to the side till I was done with all the hardwoods. Um, and now that I am done with the hardwoods, I'm moving on to the pine. Now, so far, I think I'm just gonna be milling uh, dimensional stock for construction. I don't think I'm gonna be doing any uh, you know, inch thick, four quarter, milled down to three quarter for like paneling or anything like that. I got so much of the hardwood. I like hardwood better personally, so I think I'm gonna stick with the pine being construction grade. So I'm milling it all, most of it into two by material. Um, two by fours, two by sixes, um, that's what I've done so far. And I might move on to two by eights, two by tens, two by twelves, I'm not sure. I also have uh, a 12 by 12 because I had a really, really knotty log and I didn't want to cut it thinner because I feel like when it dries, it's going to get all, it's going to crack and warp. And knotty wood is not as strong as straight grain wood. There's weak, uh, weak points in it. Yeah, so I got, I don't know, maybe about like 15, 15 to 20 logs total here. And uh, I have a log on the mill right now that I want to show you how I'm going to cut that into dimensional lumber. Alrighty, so I have already milled this thing down to a can. You've already seen that. I'd spare you, I'm going to spare you those details again. So what I got here is a 14 by eh, 14 and a half, but basically 14 by 14 cant here. So the idea is, uh, my plan here is I'm going to cut this into uh, mostly two by sixes, and whatever is left over, I'm going to cut into I think more two by sixes. I think I can do that. So let's take a look here. Um, we got. Let's start from the top. I'm going to cut two smaller cans down. So I'm going to cut six inches and then 12 inches. And then I'll have two and a half inches left. So that's great. Let me show you this. And we'll do that. Okay. So first of all, in, in, in a previous video, I talked a lot about uh, the different uh, cuts you can make. You can do uh, uh, flat sawn, riff sawn, and quarter sawn. Not going to go over that again, but I am not dealing with that at all. I am literally just looking at this log, at this cant, and I'm just not even paying attention to the grain here, and I'm just seeing what dimensions I can get out of the square that I have here. Uh, the reason being is because I'm not concerned about the way this wood looks. Uh, the grain pattern is not of relevance to me because this is going to be for construction. It's going to be hidden behind a wall and uh, or under the floor. Also, for the most part, this material doesn't have to bear a lot of weight uh, and doesn't have to be super structurally sound. Uh, in my previous video, I talked about how quarter sawn is stronger than flat sawn when there's force put down on the face of it. Um, you know, that doesn't really matter so much with, uh, with the construction grade. Uh, I don't really know the details of that too much, but I just know that when I buy, con when I buy uh, construction grade uh, pine or hemlock or dug fir from the uh, lumber yard, there is no consideration made to uh, the type of cut it is. It's all over the place. So, and that's the way it's done all the time. So I'm just going to go along with that. Okay. So I got a, uh, a six inch cant here, a six inch cant here and a two and a half inch cant here. So I'm going to make a cut here and then I'm going to make a cut here. I'm going to have three pieces. Then I'm going to turn those three pieces this way and, and then I'm going to start cutting. So basically this will be hor a horizontal cut after I turn it 90 degrees that way. And then basically I'm just gonna start for these guys, I'm gonna start cutting my uh, my two inch thick cut. So we got two inches, two inches. Okay. So now I have a two by six here and a two by six here. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean, I'm gonna, hold, I'm gonna put this one aside. I'm just gonna do these two first. I'll explain this one in a second. So I'm going to end up with how much I got here. I got 14 inches. So I, I might be able to end up with, uh, with 14 two by sixes out of this. We'll see what happens on that last cut. I lose a little bit. I lose about a 16th of an inch on the curve. So after I make like, you know, six cuts or whatever, I may not end up with an, with two inches at the end. So you might be thinking, well, you know, two by six is really, uh, one and a half by five and a half uh, inches. Um, and that's true. Um, in, in surfaced uh, S4S material that you get from typical lumberyard, it is that. Now when it's rough sawn like the way I'm doing, 
they actually it's actually cut at two inches by six inches the exact way that I'm doing this um, at some point in the last hundred years uh, when you know uh, technology had come out and there was equipment to actually do the surfacing uh, they started they re, uh, lumber lumber companies realized that they could get uh, smooth faces that are easier to handle and uh, more uh, a st more standardized dimension um, by surfacing them down and when you surface some uh, material down you're gonna lose a little bit of material so that's why you're you're coming down to you're losing half an inch off the off the width and you're losing half an inch off the length or the width and the length I'm gonna call this the six inch dimension here the length um, when you surface the material down so that gets rid of a little bit of bowing or cupping or movement that the wood uh, endured during the drying process so you end up with a straight board you end up with a board that's easier to handle um, and they're all the pieces are pretty much completely uniform in shape and size when you're doing this there's gonna be a little bit of deviation with the shape and size um, during the drying process, you know, these boards might move a little bit. I'm going to try to mitigate that as much as possible by stacking a lot of weight on top of them, as I do, as you've seen in previous videos, uh, with stacking and drying planks. Um, but I don't have machinery to, uh, to, to surface and, and, uh, and size these things down. So I'm going to build with the rough sawn lumber. I'm going to try to dry it as best I can, at least down into the teens, uh, moisture content, air drying. And I'm going to make do with what I got. If I, um, I do have a shop I can take this to if I really want to, but I'd rather save, you know, all that planing and surfacing for, uh, for all my, you know, for my flooring and my panels and on the walls and stuff like that, my hardwoods. Uh, I don't really want to waste the time with this stuff. So this is my first, uh, venture into, uh, into doing, uh, rough sawn dimensional lumber for construction and, uh, I'm going to see how it goes. All right, so I got uh, I got one and two six-inch slabs cut, and then I have this remaining uh, two and a half-inch thick guy. So I was saying I was going to hold that off till later. So what I'm going actually I'm going to do that next. So I'm going to pull this six-inch guy off, get that out of here, and then I'm going to flip this guy over 180 degrees because it's always good on that last cut to cut on the bottom side if you're going to go thinner because. Um, I explained this in a, in a previous video, but you know, I don't know if you can see this here, but you got some like live edge and a little bit of since this is the bottom, you get, sometimes you get a little bit of that taper. So the if I flip it over, I'm cutting on the narrower face, which I want to get rid of more of that narrow face. So I'm going to cut it down to two inches so it's dimensional, and uh, and then I'm going to flip it up 90 degrees, and I'm going to cut this into six inch boards itself. So I'll make a cut here and a cut here. So I'll get two two by sixes, two two by sixes out of this, and I'll have a little bit of scrap left over. This board has a little bit of spring in it, so I'm just going to put some weight down to hold it down while I'm milling it.
two inches by six inches. Roughs on. Here's that big ass 12 by 12 I was mentioning before. Not sure what I'm gonna use this for, but some type of huge load bearing beam or maybe I'll mill it up further later into some, you know, some posts to use for like a awning of some sort. And let's just take a look at this stuff too. Okay, so these are the five by five posts for the, uh, for the garden deer fence. And you can see, yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can see, uh, you know, I'm gonna use these greens, so I'm not stacking stickering them. Literally, I milled them about a week ago. And I'm probably making this fence in about a week. So just, they're just sitting out here until they're ready. And I got some smaller boards in there uh, to use for bracing and, and some, and I don't even know what, probably just bracing. Damn, man, look at all this wood I got. Been working so hard, I got one nice stack here, right? Psych, two, three, four, four stacks. Look at all this wood, it's insane. I'm gonna do with all this. I have the skid steer here. I like to le leverage my equipment as much as I can in every case possible. There's so much physical labor to do on a homestead that, you know, there's no sense in, in uh, exhausting yourself doing anything if you don't have to.